Good morning, students. In the earlier classes, we have already learned the glycolytic process, TCA cycle, electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation, and which completes the cellular respiratory process. Now, during that process, we have seen that how glucose is oxidized and this flow of this pathway starts and it ends with this pyruvate and then it enters to the TCA cycle and ultimately it ends with the oxidative phosphorylation process. During this process, we have also seen that how ATP is being generated in that process. Now, we have also seen that NADH is playing a significant role in this uh, glycolytic to oxidative phosphorylation process. Today, the topic of our discussion is pentose phosphate pathway, which is little bit different from that of the earlier metabolic pathways what we have discussed. Now, in the earlier processes, I have already told that it is the respiratory process and this is the catabolic process. But in this today's topic, this pentose phosphate pathway, what we will be discussing here will have some product which is different from the generation of NADH. Now, the product is the NADPH. Now, we must know the difference between NADH and NADPH. Now, if we see this difference between NADH and NADPH, we can find that when NADH is getting oxidized in this uh, earlier processes that cellular respiratory process, ATP is generated. That means, the cell is getting ATP when NADH is getting oxidized. But the today's concern is with NADPH, which is acting as the electron donor and it is the product which is the, uh, which is the reductive biosynthetic pathway and it is helping in very many cellular activities going on inside the cell. And today, I will be starting with pentose phosphate pathway and then I will be coming to the glycogenesis and glycogenolysis. Now, let, let us start with the pentose phosphate pathway. Pentose phosphate pathway is otherwise known as phosphogluconate pathway or hexose monophosphate shunt. In this process, in this biosynthetic pathway, it generates NADPH and pentose sugar that is 5 carbon sugar. If we see the enter pathway, we can divide the enter pathway into two distinct phases. The first is the oxidative phase in which NADPH is generated. In the second phase, the non-oxidative synthesis of 5 carbon sugars are there. This is the pathway which is alternative to the glycolytic pathway, while it does involve oxidation of glucose, its primary role is anabolic than the catabolic process. In most of the organism, this pathway is taking place in the cytoplasmic fluid of the cell, but in plant, this particular step is taking place in plastid. Now, as I have already told you that NADPH generation is there in this particular 
pathway. What is the importance of NADPH? Now, if we see the function of NADPH, then we can find that this NADPH is acting as the reducing power carrier. That means, during this metabolic process, during when the activities, several activities are simultaneously going on within the cell, then some molecules that we as a result of oxidative oxidation free radical generation is taking place. Now, when free radicals are formed, these free radicals are harmful to the cell. What this reducing power carriers are doing? They are acting as the scavenger of those free radicals which are produced during this reaction. NADPH is acting as one of such antioxidant and it is playing important role in cellular antioxidation process. I have also told you that another byproduct is the 5 carbon sugar that is the ribose sugar and in our earlier classes we have already learned that 5 carbon sugars are very important as far as this nucleic acid is concerned and if we see the structure of nucleotide then we can find that in the nucleotide code structure this 5 carbon sugar moieties are there along with that nitrogen group and, and, along, and another phosphate group is attached to that. This is the nucleotide and this sugar is the ribose sugar. In case of RNA, it is the ribose sugar and in case of DNA, it is deoxyribose sugar. So, this ribose sugar is playing a significant role in other biochemical reactions which are going on inside the cell. So, if we see the pentose phosphate pathway, it starts with glucose and when glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, this glucose 6-phosphate may get diverted to different pathways. That means, in a cell simultaneously different activities are going on and this glucose 6-phosphate may take part may get converted to fructose 6-phosphate and it can enter to this glycolytic process. When glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 1-phosphate, it enters to the synthesis of glycogen from glucose. Glucose 6-phosphate when it enters to and produce the product like 6-phosphogluconate, it enters to this pentose phosphate pathway and today we will learn this particular pathway where glucose 6-phosphate is producing the pentose sugar. Now, as I have told you that when in a cell oxidation reactions are going on, simultaneously I am telling that free radical generations are taking place and there this reduced glutathione which are there, it is acting as antioxidant. Then this NADPH has got high demand for the generation of superoxide that is neutrophils in the cell. It also helps in detoxification. If we see the different biosynthetic pathway, then we can find that fatty acid biosynthesis which takes place in liver, in adipose tissue, tissues and in mammary gland, there NADPH has got a significant role. It has got also, it is playing, this NADPH is playing also a significant role in cholesterol biosynthetic pathway which takes place in liver and steroid hormone synthesis which takes place within the cell that is in adrenal ovaries and testes 
this NADPH is playing a significant role and that is the reason why today's pathway is so important to learn. As I have told earlier, this glucose may enter to different pathways for doing different metabolic activities in the cell. When glucose is glucose concentration is more in the cell, it can be used, it can be stored in the form of glycogen which is stored in the liver. Glucose can also oxidized and entered to this pentose phosphate pathway. Glucose can also oxidize to form this pyruvate and today's lecture is how glucose is converted to 5 carbon pentose. Coming to the first step of pentose phosphate pathway. Now, as we have already seen that glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate. So, glucose 6 phosphate when it undergoes some reaction like glucose 6 phosphate in, in the presence of the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase, it produces 6 phosphogluconodelta lactone. Now, here one molecule of NADPH is produced in this reaction. This is this particular enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase is playing a significant role which controls this particular pathway. When 6 phosphogluconodelactone is produced, it is getting converted to 6 phosphogluconate in the presence of one molecule of water and the enzyme lactonase which hydrolyzes 6 phosphogluconodelactone to 6 phosphogluconate. When 6 phosphogluconate undergoes oxidative reaction, it produces ribulose. 5 phosphate. Here another molecule of NADPH, NADP is required to convert to NADPH in the presence of 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, here dehydrogenation reactions are going on simultaneously carboxylation reaction is also going on here see 6 carbon molecule is getting converted to 5 carbon molecule and one molecule of carbon dioxide is being released in this particular state. When ribulose 5 phosphate is produced ribulose 5 phosphate in the presence of isomerase enzyme that is phosphopentose isomerase this keto pentose sugar is converted to aldopentose sugar that means ketose sugar is converted to aldehydic sugar that means ribose 5-phosphate and here this ribose 5-phosphate is formed. This ribose 5-phosphate is formed in this oxidative phase of this pathway is incorporated incorporated into various product products, but any extra pentose phosphate is recycled back to glucose 6 phosphate. This is particularly important in those tissues such as erythrocyte that requires NADPH produced by this pathway, but have a lesser requirement of ribose 5-phosphate. The recycling process is essentially a process of cutting and pasting carbohydrate molecules with different number of carbon sugars. Obviously, 6 pentoses can be combined to yield 5 hexoses. Each of the reactions is reversible 
in nature. Now, when we are going to this non oxidative pathway, then step 1 is this ribulose 5 phosphate, which is there once again in the presence of this enzyme epimerase, that is ribulose 5 phosphate epimerase enzyme can convert this ribulose 5 phosphate to xylulose 5 phosphate. Now, this is the epimer, epi, epimer of these two sugars ribulose and xylulose, both are pentose sugar. Now, here when xylulose 5 phosphate and ribose 5 phosphate, the C here it is the keto pentose and here it is the aldo pentose. Now, when 5 carbon plus 5 carbon, now 5 plus 5 10 carbon undergoes reaction that is in the presence of trans ketolase enzyme, you see 5 plus 5, this 10 carbon sugar when undergoes this reaction, it produce one 3 carbon sugar and another 7 carbon sugar. So, 5 plus 5 is getting converted to 3 plus 7, 10. So, see the carbon balance here in the presence of the enzyme that is the transketolase. So, this enzyme what it does transketolase is then move two carbon unit of xylulose 5 phosphate a ketose to ribose 5 phosphate and then it becomes. So, when two carbon is coming from this sugar to this then it transform its orientation from 5 sugar to 7 carbon sugar and that is the pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate and this is and one glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that is the 3 carbon sugar. Now, in the third step what is happening this 7 carbon sugar which is there and this 3 carbon sugar which is produced in this step undergoes trans aldolase reaction. Now, when see once again this is 7 carbon, this is 3 carbon and here this 10 carbon once again and it undergoes reaction and it produce one C 4 sugar another C 6 sugar. So, 6 plus 4 10, 7 plus 3 10. So, here this trans aldolase reactions are going on and it produces one 4 carbon sugar another 6 carbon sugar. Now, here you see when this reaction is going on this trans aldolase cut a 3 carbon fragment from pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate and link it to the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate yielding one fructose 6 phosphate and one 4 carbon erythrose 4 phosphate. You see this is the keto sugar, this is aldo sugar, here this is aldo sugar and it is the keto sugar. Now, this fructose 6 phosphate can enter glycolytic process and this reaction is similar to that catalyzes the aldolases in glycolytic pathway. In the next step, this xylose 5 phosphate and erythrose 4 phosphate. So, we have seen the xylose in the first step, xylose 5 phosphate and erythrose 4 phosphate. This 5 plus 4, 9 carbon sugar undergoes transketolase reaction in the presence of the enzyme transketolase, it undergoes it, its biotransformation and it produces that C 6 and C 3 that one 3 carbon sugar another 6 carbon sugar. Now, here you see the transketolase then moves the 2 carbon unit of xylulose 4 phosphate to erythrose 4 phosphate forming fructose 6 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Both these 3 carbon and 6 carbon sugars we have already learned are the intermediate of glycolytic pathway. A second round of the cycle would produce 
two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which can be converted to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate by aldolase enzyme. Sum up the entire reactions. Then we can divide the entire PPP pathway into two distinct phase. One is the oxidative phase, another is the non-oxidative phase. In case of oxidative phase, we have seen that glucose 6-phosphate is producing two molecules of NADPH, one molecule of carbon dioxide and 6 carbon sugar is converted to 5 carbon sugar. This 5 carbon sugar undergoes this isomerase, isomerization reaction and ribulose becomes ribose, this aldose, aldose sugar. And here with this, this 5 carbon, 2 5 carbon sugar, 1 aldose and ketose origin, they undergo different types of non-oxidative reactions and we have seen that there is a production of C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, etc. sugar and these are the intermediate and ultimately we have seen that fructose 6-phosphate which is produced can once again revert back to glucose 6-phosphate or fructose 6-phosphate can enter to the glycolytic pathway. So, if we sum up this what are the outcome of this PPP pathway that is pentose phosphate pathway. The generation of reducing equivalents in the form of NADPH used in reductive biosynthesis reaction within the cell, production of ribose 5-phosphate used in the synthesis of nucleotide and nucleic acid, production of erythrose 4 phosphate, this 4 carbon sugar which is there is acting as the precursor for the synthesis of aromatic amino acids. So, we can see that each of the intermediates which are produced in this pathway is playing a significant role in the living system. Now, if we see the role of NADPH uh, in red blood cell. In red blood cells, the major role of NADPH is to reduce the disulfide form of glutathione to the sulfhydryl form. The reduced glutathione is pertinent for maintaining the normal structure of red blood cell for keeping hemoglobin in the ferrous state. And red blood cells used this pathway to produce needed NADPH to maintain the reduced iron and to maintain the concentration of reduced glutathione. And this is the major role of NADPH in the in blood. Now, overall reaction if we see glucose 6 phosphate plus 2 molecules of NADP and 1 molecule of H2O is releasing ribulose 5 phosphate plus 2 NADPH plus 2 hydrogen and 1 molecule of carbon dioxide. In non-oxidative phase, 3 ribulose 5 phosphate is giving 1 ribose 5 phosphate, 2 xylulose 5 phosphate which undergoes further reaction to yield 2 molecules of fructose 6 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which are the end product of this PPP pathway. Now, if we see the regulation of this PPP pathway, we can find that the entry of glucose 6-phosphate into pentose phosphate pathway is controlled by the cellular concentration of NADPH. NADPH is a strong inhibitor of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. That means, in this way the reaction is being controlled by the this NADPH and 6-phospho 
dehydrogenase. As NADPH is used in various pathway, inhibition is relieved and the enzyme is accelerated to produce more and more NADPH. The synthesis of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is induced by the increased insulin or glucagon ratio after the high carbohydrate meal. So, when high carbohydrate is being intake inside the body, this insulin and glucagon, whether glucose, the body needs glucose or high concentration of glucose is there, whether glucose is to be converted to glycogen, these two hormones are balancing this particular thing. And this is the regulation of PPP pathway. And as I have told you that this particular uh, by the, the byproduct of this particular cell cycle, this metabolic pathway is playing significant role in the different metabolic activities. Now, let us see that how glycogen is being synthesized. When glucose is more in the body, in the cell, how glucose is getting converted and getting stored in the liver by this process. So, we will learn that how glucose is converted to glycogen. As in my earlier classes, I have told you that glycogen is the storage food material in case of animals. Now, here if we see that structure of glycogen, then we can find that glycogen is a polymer of glucose residues which are linked by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkages and alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkages. Now, when this branching is there, then it is alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage. Now, here in the liver I have told you the synthesis and breakdown of glycogen is regulated to maintain the blood glucose level and in muscle the synthesis and breakdown of glycogen is regulated to meet the energy requirement of the muscle cell. That means, it is playing that the glucose is or glycogen is playing a significant role to supply the glucose in different parts of the cell and glycogen is being stored the glucose in the form of glycogen is being stored in the liver cell and then it is or muscle and it is being released and glucose is giving energy to the muscle. Now, when we are talking about the different stages of glycogen synthesis, then we can find that glucose is getting converted to glucose 6-phosphate. This step is same to that of the glycolytic, first step of glycolytic process. Here you see hexokinase is the enzyme, one molecule of ATP is needed carry out this reaction to phosphorylate this glucose 6-phosphate that for phosphorylation process ATP is needed and for higher cell glucokinase is playing a significant role for conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate, this is a very interesting step, way, uh, step for this particular pathway of glycogen synthesis. Glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of phosphoglucomutase is getting converted to glucose 1,6-bisphosphate which is a very unstable intermediate product and ultimately it is producing glucose 1 phosphate. Now, see this is the structure, this is the mutase enzyme which has got one phosphate group within the structure of this enzyme. This mutase enzyme has got its phosphate group within it. Now, glucose 1 phosphate is there. So, glucose 6 phosphate is getting with the donation of this phosphate group from this particular mutase enzyme, it is becoming glucose 
1 6 bisphosphate that means 1 position and 6 positions are phosphorylated. This product is a very unstable product and this enzyme once again taking back of this phosphate from the 6th position of this phosphate is be being taken up by this enzyme and it produces glucose 1-phosphate in this particular state. Now, when glucose 1-phosphate is produced, 1-phosphate in the presence of uridyl transferase enzyme is producing UDP glucose that means uridine diphosphate. This uridine diphosphate in, in the presence of pyrophosphate, it is releasing 2 inorganic phosphate. Now, here in this step, once this UDP glucose is produced, the synthesis of glycogen is taking place. Now, say for glycogen synthesis, glycogenin protein is playing a significant role. Glycogenin protein, if we see the structure, we will find that this protein moieties has got one tyrosinase residue and in this tyrosinase residue, we know that one aromatic ring and one hydroxyl group is there with this tyrosine and this tyrosine when it comes with this UDP glucose which is produced in the earlier step, this UDP glucose and this protein glycogenin protein undergoes this reaction and here this hydroxyl group is getting binded with the first carbon of this glucose moieties and UDP molecules are getting released and this core moieties, this glycogenin protein is getting attached with this glucose moieties of this UDP glucose. Now, it becomes UDP and glucose is getting attached with this glycogenin protein. Now, when this, this way UDP glucose is going on supplying this particular uh, reaction to go forward. Now, every time this UDP glucose is coming in contact with this particular um, bonding and this fourth carbon you see it is free and in this way this new new residues are coming and getting attached. See UDP glucose is here and it is supplying this glucose to this chain and this UDP uh, this glucose is getting attached to this and UDP is being released out of this particular uh, reaction. That means, UDP glucose is acting as the glucose donor to this and in this way the chain length of this glycogenin and one end is attached to the glycogenin protein and this way the chain length is getting increased and it is getting attached with the um, uh, this alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages. Now, if we see the glycogen synthesis, now this way the synthesis is taking place within the cell. Now, a glyco glycosidic bond is formed between the anomeric C1 carbon atom moieties derived from UDP glucose and the hydroxyl tyrosine side chain of glycogenin UDP is released as a product. So, see this, this particular uh, reaction here which is there, you see this here this first carbon, this is the first carbon, this is the second carbon. So, first carbon is getting linked with the tyrosinase, this is the hydroxyl group and it is getting linked with the first carbon. The fourth carbon is getting free and when another residue is coming, then it is getting linked with the first carbon of the another glucose moieties and in this way alpha 1, 4 glycosidic linkages is formed with this particular reaction. Glycogenin is then catalyzes the glycosylation at C4 of the attached glucose with UDP glucose again being the glucose donor. The product is an O-linked disaccharide with 
an alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. This process is repeated until a short chain of glucose polymer is produced and alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkages is built up. Glycogen synthase is the enzyme which catalyzes the elongation of the glycogen chain. That means, how big this chain length will be. Glycogen synthase catalyzes the transfer of glucose moieties. That means, in presence of this glycogen synthase enzyme, the supply of UDP glucose is continuing and chain length is being determined. To the hydroxyl C4 of the terminal residue of the glycogen chain to form alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkages. The branching enzyme trans transfer a segment from the end of the glycogen chain to the 6 hydroxyl group of the glucose residue. So, this 6 hydroxyl group of the glucose residue and from here the branching of alpha 1 6 linkages starts which completes the actual glycogen structure. So, one is the linear chain, another is the branch chain and here this branching is taking place and this way the glycogen is getting synthesized in the cell. Now, glycogen synthase is the regulatory enzyme in the synthesis of glycogen. That means, in glycogen synthesis that enzyme glycogen synthase is playing a significant role. The enzyme is regulated by covalent modification and phosphorylation. Now, if we see the regulation of glycogen, glycogen synthase enzyme, we can find that when glycogen synthase is phosphorylated, it is inactivated. That means, in the non-phosphorylated form of glycogen synthase is the active form and when it is getting inactive that means, it is phosphorylated. It is similar to that of glycogen phosphorylase enzyme which is active upon phosphorylation and inactive upon dephosphorylation and that thus glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase are completely different in its activities. So, glycogen synthase is playing a significant role in case of glycogen synthesis. Now, if we see the glycogen synthesis, we can find out this glucose 6 phosphate becomes glucose 1 phosphate. Glucose 1 phosphate in the presence of UTP produce this UDP glucose and PPI. This pyrophosphate in presence of water is giving inorganic phosphate. UDP glucose now it supplies this glucose moieties to the glycogen moieties and this glycogen become glycogen N plus 1 and in this way the number of UDP glucose is increasing the chain length of glycogen moieties. Glucose 6 phosphate plus ATP plus glycogen N molecules of uh, glucose moieties plus water molecule gives rise to glycogen N plus 1 plus ADP plus 2 PI. The only ATP is used to store one glucose residue in glycogen. So, this is the glycogen synthesis in the cell. Now, if we see the glycogen breakdown, that means when the cell is in need of glucose, then glycogen is once again chopped down to glucose moieties. Now, how it is taking place? Glycogenolysis is a catabolic process which involves the breakdown of glycogen to glucose units. If the pathway of glycogen breakdown was elucidated by the studies of Cori's and Cori's. The formation and breakdown of glycogen regulates the blood glucose level in the body. Three enzymes are playing 
a very important crucial role in this glycogen breakdown process, which is the glycogen phosphorylase, glycogen branching enzyme that is branching enzymes are once again divided into two, one is called the transferase, another is the alpha 1 6 glucosidase and third one is the phosphoglucomutase. Now, these three enzymes are playing a significant role in this process. Now, how this glycogenolysis takes place? Now, in the step one, what is happening? The sequential removal of glycosyl residues from the non-reducing end of glycogen molecules takes place. Glycosidic linkages between the glycosyl residues is split by the orthophosphoric acid that means inorganic phosphate, orthophosphate is playing a significant role. Enzyme responsible for this step is glycogen phosphorylase which is activated by phosphorylase kinase. Now, this particular enzyme is very important as far as the breakdown of glycogen is concerned. In case of glycogen synthesis, glycogen synthase enzyme was playing the significant role, but here in during this breakdown process, glycogen phosphorylase in the presence of phosphorylase kinase is playing a significant role. In the first step of glycogenolysis, we can see this is the 1, 4 glycosidic linkages, n number of such chains are there in presence of orthophosphate and in presence of glycogen phosphorylase enzyme, this, this it is getting this inorganic phosphate is occupying the first position of this uh, glucose, glucose 1 phosphate is produced and here n number of this n minus 1 glycogen residues are remaining. Glucose 1 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate which can further enter to the metabolic pathway. The enzyme responsible for this particular reaction is the phosphoglucomutase. Now, phosphoglucomutase is converting glucose 1 phosphate to glucose 1, 6 bisphosphate and ultimately it is producing glucose 6 phosphate. You see here uh, as I have told you that phosphoglucomutase is a very interesting enzyme. It contains some phosphate group within this and when you see glucose 1 phosphate has got already 1 phosphate in the first carbon and here this phosphate is being donated to the 6th position of this glucose and it becomes glucose 1, 6 bisphosphate. This particular product is a very, very unstable product and immediately what this mutase enzyme is doing, it is taking up the phosphate group from the first carbon and it go, taking back this phosphate group once again to eat, donating this phosphate to the 6 phosphate and glucose 1 phosphate becomes glucose 6 phosphate. So, this is the reaction which is going on inside the cell. Now, this reaction is reversible in nature, released sugar is phosphorylated, no investment of ATP is needed because inorganic phosphate or orthophosphate is donating this phosphate group, no ATP is needed in this particular reaction required and can enter to the glycolysis directly. The phosphorylated product of glucose 1 phosphate cannot leave the cell. While coming to the step 2, we can see that glycogen chain is attached to the core glycogenin protein is degraded into a limited extent by this phosphorylase enzyme. It fails to break the alpha 1, 6 glycosidic that means a branching chain, straight chain and branch chain, it fails to break the branching chain where this alpha 1, 6 glycosidic bondings are there. 
Phosphodiolase enzyme stops the cleaving of alpha 14 linkages when it reaches the terminal residue, which is 4 residue away from the branching point. This is very interesting mechanism. Now, glycogen branching enzyme A transfer the 3 glucose residue from the 4 residue glycogen branching to the nearby branch. Now, here see 2 points. Phosphorylase enzyme stop cleaving alpha 14 linkages till the 4 residues are left in this process. That means, you see this is the alpha 14 linkages, this is 1 6 and then 1 4 linkages are there and this straight chain is going on and this phosphorylase enzyme is cutting down this and releasing this glucose moieties free from this branch until and unless 4 residues are left. As long as 4 residues are left, it stopped its cleaving. That means, here 1 6 linkages are there. What then it is doing? Now, what it is doing? It is now enzyme A that is that transfer the 3 glucose residues from the 4 carbon chain. That means, this 3 carbon sugar is now getting clipped by this A enzyme and it is getting debranched and coming and getting joined to the nearby chain. So, here from the 4 glucose residues were there, 3 glucose residues were debranched by the enzyme A the transfer is and it transferred these 3 moieties to this linear branch remaining this 1 glucose with this alpha 1 6 linkages are there. Now, glycogen debranching enzyme A transfer this glucose 3 glucose residues to the 4 residues glycogen branch to the nearby branch it is getting joined. These leaves on the donor branch a single glucose residue which is attached or connected to the main chain by an alpha 1 6 linkage. Now, here this 1 glucose moieties which is left this glycogen branching enzyme B is now cleaving this 1 6 glycosidic linkages and making this glucose moieties free and it becomes once again the linear chain and linear chain once again it will start breaking this particular glycosidic uh, this glycogen molecules and giving a continuous supply of glucose to the system. Now, if we see the overall reaction then we can find that you see this is the glycogen in protein which is attached to this glycogen and glycogen has got 1 4 and 1 6 linkages. So, 1 4 linkages are the linear and it goes on chopping in the normal position. In case of 1 6 this 1 6 is the branching and thereafter once again this 1 4 linkages are there. So, it starts cleaving from the uh, non reducing end of this sugar and as soon as 4 carbon moieties are there it stop its cleavage. When 4 carbon moieties are left then phosphorylase this debranching this enzyme A is now active and it cleaved the 3 carbon residue from this 4 car carbon sugar moieties and it comes and getting attached to this main chain this any straight 1 4 glycosidic linkage. And here 1 glucose molecule is remain attached to with 1 6 glycosidic linkage. Now, when this 1 6 glycosidic linkage this sugar moieties is left then once again glycogen debranching enzyme B is active and here it cleaves this 1 6 branching leaving this glucose moieties free from this branching chain and glucose moieties are getting free. And in this way this breakdown mechanism is going on inside the cell. 
So, we have learned the glycogen synthesis, glycogen breakdown. This glycogen synthesis and breakdown is totally depend upon the concentration and the availability of glucose within the cell. Now, if we see the fate of glucose 6 phosphate which is there, so we can see that this glucose 6 phosphate which is produced from either glycogen, this glycogen is converted to glycogen uh, glucose 1 phosphate, glucose 1 phosphate is once again converted to glucose 6 phosphate and this glucose 6 phosphate undergoes different reaction where in the muscle cell or in the brain cell through glycolytic process it under it it is converted, it is getting oxidized to py pyruvate. Further, in under anaerobic condition, pyruvate is getting converted to lactate. Pyruvate can enter to the TCA cycle with the release of a molecule of carbon dioxide and acetyl CoA is formed and TCA cycle starts that enters to the respiratory chain. Glucose 6 phosphate inside the liver in the presence of glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme is getting dephosphorylated and it becomes this glucose and this glucose can now come to this blood stream and it can go to the different part of the cell and it supplies the energy. Glucose 6 phosphate can also enter to this pentose phosphate pathway where glucose 6 phosphate we have learnt that how it is converted to 5 carbon sugar ribose sugar and NADPH. So, this is the overall fit of glucose 6 phosphate in the cell. Now, if we see the glycogen synthesis and breakdown we can find that these are reciprocally regulated within the cell. Now, if we see this the hormone epinephrine, it is activating adenylate cyclase enzyme which is in the active in inactive form with the release of this epinephrine hormone it becomes active and it, it is become adenylate cyclase. Once this enzyme is active ATP is converted to cyclic AMP, cyclic AMP when formed it once again activate the inactive protein kinase A2 protein active protein kinase A. When protein kinase is active it is regulating this phosphorylase kinase of this enzyme and this phosphorylase kinase undergoes this when it is active it is undergoing the phosphorylase B form inactive form to phosphorylase A form and when we we have seen that in the in the in the uh, cell when phosphorylase A is active that means glucose under starving condition when body needs glucose then this particular breakdown process is to be taken place and in this phosphorylated form we have seen that this particular enzyme is very active that means this when body is under uh, starving condition this epinephrine hormone is the indicator and which is just switching on and switching off the different active and inactive form of this enzyme and this phosphorylation and body is now getting continuous supply of glucose which is getting choked which is getting broken down to glucose from glycogen and this way this is controlling this particular 
pathway. Similarly, the this particular when reaction starts that means, we have to also stop this glycogen synthesis. Glycogen synthesis we have seen that when this glycogen synthesis is there that means, it is converting glucose to glycogen, but body is in demand of this glucose. So, we cannot use this particular uh, enzyme uh, this uh, enzyme to be active. So, what it is doing this adenylate cyclase it is coming this protein kinase up to protein kinase is active protein kinase is now inactivating the glycogen synthase which is synthesizing which is utilizing this glycogen synthesis process and it gets stopped. So, glycogen glucose to glycogen formation is getting stopped and here when this body is under high demand of glucose this phosphorylase a enzyme is active. So, chopping down process break, break down process takes place and supply of glucose in the body is taking place. So, in conclusion what we can do tell that glucagon is helping when the body is under starving state it stimulate glycogen breakdown inhibits glycogen synthesis. And when high glucose body is having very high glucose this fed state the insulin stimulate glycogen synthesis and inhibits glycogen breakdown. So, that further concentration of glucose in the cell is getting controlled and in this way this pentose phosphate pathway glucose synthesis and glucose breakdown is taking place in the cell and it is also being controlled simultaneously within the cell system. Thank you very much.